I've talked before about the benefits of having less gear and how consumerism is killing your creativity, but let's be real, no one likes to be preached at. So I'm going to assume that you already want to at least cut down on gear purchasing, but still make more music. So let's talk about how to do that without feeling like you're depriving yourself. And I'm going to show you what it has to do with this weird looking graph. To do this, I figured it would be good to examine the reasons why we as music producers and hardware heads have the urge to get new gear and then find ways to address those without buying new gear. And I put up a poll on my community tab just to get a little bit of data rather than just idly conjecturing about it. Not super scientific, but hopefully will give us at least a decent roadmap. There were a bunch of comments as well, which unfortunately I found out afterwards once a post is archived. Uh, go away. But the general gist of a lot of the comments related to buying gear for inspiration, trying out new ways of working, filling gaps in their setup, just enjoying gadgets for their own sake, or of course, giving in to the endless march of consumerism. That last thing, of course, is what we're trying to get away from. So let's get into the actual categories, starting with what is in my mind the most practical, filling a gap in your setup. This being the most utilitarian also means that it's the most insidious because we can use it to come up with justifications for what is a purely emotional purchase. But the first thing that I personally would do is take a look at your setup and a pretty good hard look at the actual tools that make up that setup and see if that gap that you think you have actually exists. I've been surprised multiple times with a, uh, oh, this thing can do that? moment and so this is a good opportunity to get to know the gear that you have better and discover some cool stuff that you weren't previously aware of but what if you have a specific idea a specific creative project you want to accomplish and you feel like you can't do it without getting that new thing but for whatever reason you can't get that new thing Personally, I have a rule. Never let the lack of something keep you from executing an idea, even if it means employing workarounds or maybe even creating a compromised product. Worst case scenario, you can remake a good idea with shoddy execution later. For example, I am primarily an electronic music producer and drummer, but a few years ago, I wanted to try my hand at making metal and metalcore, but I'm not a guitarist. I didn't own a guitar at the time, and I'm not great at guitar and probably couldn't play the parts that I wanted to write anyway. So rather than let that stop me, I got a guitar sampled instrument plugin and I made those freaking metal tracks. And not only did I get the idea out of my head and into the real world, but I also picked up a lot of skills of like composition and mixing that allowed me to make much better metal tracks when I actually finally did get a guitar and teach myself some rudimentary stuff. Basically what I'm saying is, ruthlessly identify the gap in your setup and fill it and not necessarily with hardware. Maybe it's with a process or computer-based tool instead. For another example, there are times that I've used a self-contained groove box with a pretty limited number of tracks but I have intentionally made more layers than that groove box actually supports and then stacked them on top of each other in post like I've done with the Roland MC-101. Or I've resorted to muting and unmuting tracks on devices that don't have multi-track export, like the Innovation Circuit or the Electron Model Cycles. The Model Cycles is a good example of the next idea as well. If you're feeling really limited and boxed in by the sound of a piece of gear, you can either embrace it and make something that really leans into that device's particular sound, or you can fight it. And this track that I made on the Model Cycles kind of does both. It embraces the plinky metallic nature of a lot of its sounds, but then I fought its nature by muting and unmuting tracks to multi-track it and then stacked plugins to make the sound a little more filled out.
But Gabe, I hear you saying, I don't have a specific idea for a creative product, but I do have a specific idea for a process or a setup and how I want that to work and what I want the experience to be. One thing I would recommend is try to find a way, maybe a temporary way, maybe a workaround way, but try to find some way to try the basic gist of that workflow or setup without having to go all in on it, a way to beta test it. You might discover that you don't actually need that new piece of gear or that that setup isn't actually as fun as you had hoped, so you can make adjustments before you pull the trigger on anything and dial it in before you waste your time and your money with new gadgets. Overall, and this is gonna be a little bit preachy, I do really want to encourage you to adopt the approach that you can make music with whatever you have. Even if it's janky, you can make it work because the music is more important than my limitations. But also acknowledge that the more complicated a setup is, the more difficult it is to use, the more you're less likely to use it much. And that's why I do try to encourage people to stay away from overcomplicated setups unless you've got pretty good proof of concept first. Also, I did a dedicated video talking about how overcomplicated setups stop you from making music. I'll link it at the end of this one. But next up, let's talk about inspiration. I'm gonna take this from a couple different angles. First of all, exciting, perceived or real possibilities. I think a lot of us have had this. We're watching a gear demo of some sort and we hear these sounds or we see this workflow and we start imagining ourselves wielding the power of that device and going, ooh, if I had this, I could do this, this, and this. And you start like brainstorming ideas to take the thing that you just saw and heard and how you would adapt it and make cool stuff with it. When this happens to me, I try to use it as fuel to get as close to that sound or experience with what I already have. After all, I'm already feeling excited and inspired and I didn't even have to buy anything, so I might as well harness it to make some music. I might as well take advantage of that excitement. Samples are your friend here. If you can work with sampled sounds similar to what you want to make and use that to make music, maybe that can scratch that itch or at least tide you over until it makes sense to buy that gear. Or I'm a big fan of this. Maybe you can use a device you already have to imitate the workflow of another device. For example, uh, I have imitated the SB404 workflow on my MPC by resampling my own music. Shout out to Jorb for that idea. The other useful thing to keep in mind is that often purchasing a device can kind of tick the box in your head like, well, mission accomplished. I have already done the thing. I had this when I was a kid, like checking out books from the library. I would check out all these books more than I could possibly read in like, you know, two weeks or whatever, and then only read a couple of them because checking out the books was the exciting part. I think this very much applies to gadgets as well. And a lot of people have this when getting into new hobbies. You buy the things associated with that hobby and then you kind of run out of motivation to do the thing because your brain has already convinced itself that you're good to go. So that's the imagine the possibilities side of buying gear for inspiration. The other side of it is just wanting something new, something that gives you a way to work with sounds or a workflow that you haven't worked with so much. Having tried a bunch of gadgets for the purposes of this channel, one interesting thing that I've noticed is that uh, getting new gear interrupts your normal patterns. For instance, I've noticed even things like pad layouts have an influence on my songwriting. The difference between something like this, where the scale is laid out linearly, versus something like this, where a scale is broken up in a weird, uneven way, causes me to kind of naturally noodle around differently and therefore come up with different song ideas. I think you could extend this by say, forcing yourself to write in a different scale from what you're used to, or if the device allows connecting a differently laid out MIDI controller to it. Essentially what I'm getting at here is, Find a way to deliberately interrupt your normal habits. If you normally focus on flipping samples, maybe go out of your way to write a synth-based melody or vice versa. If you're really used to step sequencing, try playing stuff in live or vice versa. Resample stuff, either for sound design or for flipping your own samples. Engage in a little bit of genre hopping. Make something out of your normal wheelhouse. 
And of course, I can't not mention loading in new sounds here. Loading a new slate of sounds into a device can make it feel fresh, like an entirely new device. Don't underrate that. If you've got something portable, bringing it to a new location can also go a surprisingly long way. It is worth mentioning though, and this is where we finally get back to that graph I mentioned at the beginning of this video, that the inspiration from buying new gear, at least for me personally, having tried a lot of it for this channel, that inspiration wears off fairly quickly, I think. My little hypothesis about this, which is the graph I wanna show you, I'm calling the gear inspiration curve. This is based on no data, purely personal experience. This is just a visual aid to get the idea across. Basically, the gear inspiration curve says that the inspiration that you get from a device over time follows this path. When you start off at moment zero and first dig into a device, the possibilities feel exciting, you are supercharged by this new experience, and so your inspiration goes up over time very quickly. Then you hit the learning curve and your inspiration levels actually dip below normal levels as you're forced to deal with the mundane and the frustrating. But then, as you get to know the device better and it becomes second nature, the inspiration that you can get from it becomes practically unlimited and more limited by your creativity and musical imagination than the device itself. And here's the thing, gadgets can be super interesting for their own sake and a very legitimate source of inspiration. I've definitely gotten inspired by all the gadgets that I've used, even though I would consider myself more of a minimalist and I mostly try gear for the sake of this channel. But the big thing I've noticed is that in order to generate inspiration, you need to shake up your routine. You need some sort of pattern interrupt. Buying new gear is one way to get that, but it's not the only way to get that. If you're bored with the gadgets that you have, there's a chance that you're bored with music production. And the way to get over that is to introduce something new. And there's such a wide world of musical exploration to do and so I think the big thing is when you realize that you're becoming bored of gadgets or bored of music production is to recognize it and go, okay, what can I do that's outside of my normal comfort area? Anyways, that's what I was trying to get to. That's why so much of this video was talking about ways to shake up your normal routine, because I think that is truly how you keep yourself excited and interested and learning in this whole music production world. There's also a chance that you might just be running low on ideas. And I did a dedicated video ages ago on how to come up with song ideas, or at least some ideas to do so. So you can check that out up over here. And if you'd like some more music gear thinky commentary, I've got you up over here. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back with a new video in a little bit.